For those of you who do not know what has gone on over the last, I don't know, 15 to 20 hours or so, former Pittsburgh Steelers cornerback, current CBS sports analyst Bryant McFadden tweeted out that the Pittsburgh Steelers are quote unquote closing in on a significant playmaker and immediately everybody started running wild with it. We've kind of locked into the reports of this is a wide receiver trade in the making. The Pittsburgh Steelers are actively pursuing at least one big name following the NFL draft. And I think everybody could kind of key in on a couple of names here or there that they believe they are targeting. Now, let me ask this because I've, I've heard some things. I, I, I have some reports of my own of what is happening with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You saw it all. You see everything flying around. Who's the name that popped out to you? Where was your thought process in the whole thing? I mean, the name that stands out to me is, is Cortland Sutton, mainly because the Broncos are in a position where, yeah, they could trade a Cortland Sutton. They're kind of starting from scratch out there in Denver with Sean Payton getting Bo Nix. He brought in Bo Nix's number one receiver from Oregon and Troy yes. Franklin. So he's kind of starting over in Denver. So it makes sense to maybe be moving on from a guy in Cortland Sutton who is been in trade speculation and rumors for over a year. The Ayuk and, and Debo Samuel stuff, it's weird because the San Francisco 49ers went out and got Ricky Pearsall with a first-round pick. If you're going to yep. do that, plus have these other weapons already, are you feeling like that is your one pick and one piece that you're missing, or are you going to trade one of your big guys? That's To me, I'm not exactly sure where they stand because they're certainly in go-for-it mode, yep. but when you draft a receiver – to an already stacked offense of weapons with a first round pick. I'm not exactly sure where that puts them. So the name that stood out to me the most was Cortland Sutton. Yeah, I, I think everybody started thinking Cortland Sutton was the guy. I'll say this. So it started going off. Everybody started talking about, hey, who could it be? Where are the Pittsburgh Steelers going to trade with? Or who are the Pittsburgh Steelers going to trade with? What's the big name that they're going to land? And I start digging. I start, hey, what, have, what are we hearing? I start making phone calls. This is what I have come up with. The name Cortland Sutton has not been presented to me, and it has popped up. I mean, Benjamin Albright, you could take that tweet as you will. With the For those of you who have not seen it, he tweeted out. He's a, he's a Denver Broncos insider. He tweeted out, reunited, and it feels so good. And immediately everybody goes, there it is, Russell Wilson, Cortland Sutton, but Zach Azadi's here as well. It could have a bunch of meetings. Then he later goes back and says, no, that's not true. There are other reports floating out out there from Denver that the, the Steelers and the Broncos are not trading for Cortland Sutton, that that is not going to happen right now. So that's not a name that was tossed out to me. The names that were tossed out to me were Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, that the 49ers and the Steelers were having conversations. I don't know how early in the process this is. That's where it gets interesting is what BMAC tweeted, you have to look at and say, what is closing in on, you know, and how early in the process was it? Because if they were closing in, I would imagine a deal was already getting done. And, and I get it. You know, sometimes you get information and you misinterpret it and you put it out there and, and you maybe jump the gun a little bit. And I think that may be what happened in this instance. I'm not saying that a trade isn't going to happen. I think a trade is going to happen. I've been standing firm with the belief that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to make a trade because everything I've been told up until this point is that the Pittsburgh Steelers want to land a wide receiver in the trade market. And their eyes have been on Brandon Ayuk the entire time, that they have not taken their eyes off of Brandon Ayuk, that every time you get a guy like John Lynch trying to say, oh, it's not going to happen, Omar Khan just calls again and says, hey, what about now? You know, so I, I think that that's the name. I was told the latest updates that I got are that the Steelers and the 49ers are talking, that they're in talks, that they have been in talks, that no matter how much John Lynch says they're not going to trade a wide receiver, the Steelers feel that they are going to trade for a wide receiver. The problem is, is that the price tag is high. The Steelers may not be willing to give up the price tag that the San Francisco 49ers want for either Brandon Aig or Debo Samuels. But at the same time, Debo kind of wants out because after all the trade rumors started, it upset him, obviously, as it probably would have. And he no longer feels, I guess, as happy as he once was 72, 84 hours ago, whatever that that next number is in the 24 hour system. That's where we stand with the Pittsburgh Steelers in a trade for a wide receiver. If I had to guess what one it is, 
I'm going to still guess that Brandon Ayuk finds his way to the Pittsburgh Steelers before this is all said and done, because it just feels like that's the guy that they want more than any other. I toss out those names. How realistic does it sound? Kind of sounds like I'm talking about my butt or you feel like maybe there's a chance. I feel like, again, it goes back to what they did over the draft weekend. Now, it, it is weird to think that some people were saying that, you know, it was going to happen the Monday after the draft because at this point, the clock resets, right? There yep. was that one deadline of the NFL draft that came and went. They didn't get a deal done. San Francisco made a couple interesting moves, but why would it get done the Monday after, right? They have time to work this out. San Francisco, if they want that high price, they can hold out a little bit longer. It's not like yep. anything's going to change between now and OTAs. Nothing's going to change between now and, and training camp other than maybe the frustration of the players. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing as far as the timeline goes is how frustrated do one of Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel get with all the speculation and at what point do they come out and say, just like trade me already. I'm not going to yep. play. And if that doesn't happen, San Francisco has no clock right now i mean the regular season maybe training camp maybe but at the end of the day it feels like if it's going to happen the monday after the draft would have been a very shocking timeline to me guys this is a public service announcement and it is urgent you think that you have mastered the look in sweatpants and joggers well guess what my friend you have not you are one step away from wearing pajamas in public and your significant other is starting to think that you look like a slob it's time to take your sexy ass and put it in some jeans if you take anything away from today's show it's that the perfect jean isn't just another pair of stiff uncomfortable nut crushing pants they have cracked the code on solving your denim difficulties and it is time to rejoice check them out always looking good the perfect jean makes great looking perfect fitting jeans that are as comfortable as sweatpants and more stretchy than a kangaroo's pouch it's made from a special denim fabric that's super soft just like sweatpants just like joggers but it doesn't make you look like a slob and the best part they make six fits from skinny to thick thick waist sizes from 26 to 50 and lengths from 26 to 38 so whether you are a thick thick guy or a short king or guess what anything in between they perfectly fit your body and accentuate your assets pun intended trust us when we say that these are truly fucking perfect jeans once you try them on you'll never go back once again Boom. For a limited time, our listeners get 15% off their first order plus free shipping at theperfectgene.myc or just Google the perfect gene and use our code all Steelers15 for 15% off. Look at I have been looking for a while. I have been talking to my fiance daily. I need to find a look. I've tried them all. I tried khakis, I tried joggers, I tried sweatpants, I tried shorts. Nothing fits me like the perfect jeans fit me. The Perfect Jean doesn't just stop there, though. They've revolutionized t-shirts as well. The Perfect Tee has just enough stretch to hide the beer belly while accentuating your arms and chest for that flawless look. It's soft like butter without shrinking in the wash like all your other t-shirts. It's just, no, well, perfect. The Perfect Jean always has free shipping, always has free exchanges, and always has free returns. So you can have peace of mind knowing that your order is completely risk-free. It's finally time to stop crushing your balls in uncomfortable jeans by going to theperfectgene.myc. Our listeners get 15% off your first order plus free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges when you use our code ALLSTEALERS15 at checkout. That's 15% off for new customers at theperfectgene.myc with promo code ALLSTEALERS15. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please, please, please give us some support and tell them that we sent you. Fuck your khakis and get the perfect gene. Yeah, I think it would have been early in the process, but I wouldn't rule it out. Like I was, I was a little bit, just like you said, surprised that it happened as quickly as it did that the news hit as quickly as it did i i still look at it as a very likely possibility i'm going to say this if i had to guess when it does happen it's in the next week i would say that my timeline has moved up i still think that if it doesn't happen within the next week that we go right up until week 1 of the i mean i said it yesterday we right up until week 1 of the nfl season is when the steelers okay we don't need a wide receiver 
becomes like a eh, probably not going to happen now. And I think if they go into week one and they realize, wow, we need a wide receiver, Omar Khan gets on the phone immediately Sunday night. I'm just saying, I, I I could see it happening within a week only because I think the NFL draft and all the rumors that started there sparked something in San Francisco. I know Kyle Shanahan wants to keep his wide receiver core and he wants to hunt for a Super Bowl, and that's where they're standing here. But I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are digging little and little and little, bit by bit by bit, and eventually they're going to hit a spot where they go, okay, this makes some sense for both sides. Let's make it happen. I don't know why the Steelers are looking as hard as they are to go get a wide receiver. I think, I guess they, they really truly believe that that is the turning point. That is the difference between where they stand right now as a contender and where they could stand as a winner. I, and I, I don't know. They just, they do. I will say this. I think it could happen in a week. If I had to guess compensation and name, I would guess Brandon Ayuk, and I would guess maybe a second round pick in the 2025 NFL draft. I don't think it's higher than that. I think Debo Samuel is actually less than that. If I had to predict a move, the craziest part is that the most realistic name was Cortland Sutton coming into this. And from what I hear, it's not Cortland Sutton. And there are other names out there. There's rumors floating around about Devontae Adams. There's rumors floating around about DK Metcalf. I will say this, none of them are true. Not not one of them. You know, AB was the closest I got because I actually got a text yesterday. This is how wild this is. I texted you and Steven in the group chat and I said, dude, there's no way this is about to happen, but maybe it is. I got a text yesterday that's just said, this was just a text. It said, look at AB's tweet. And I said, okay. I said, there's no way it's, and I texted back. I said, Devonte Adams or Terry McLaurin. There's no way that it's one of those guys. And all I got back were three dots, dot, 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 in a text. And I said, "There's what are you doing to me right now? First off, wh- who does that to somebody? Second off, could we stop playing games and maybe at least give us a little bit of something? That's where we stand. I don't think that there is anything locked in. I don't know how close a deal is for anybody. I think that there is a lot of nonsense floating out there. I'm not saying Max tweet is nonsense. I think that he ha- really has something there. I think that the Steelers are really working. But I don't think that closing in is as close as people want to make it out to seem, or maybe that we all interpreted it to be, because I think he might have just a little bit jumped the gun on where they stand with an actual move here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's let's answer some questions because we got a couple of people that we really appreciate, and obviously we want to get to them real fast. Michael, appreciate you. Out of all the wide receivers we can trade for, who looks like the most realistic and which one makes the most sense? The most realistic right now, just from what I am hearing, is is Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuels. Those are the names that the Steelers are pursuing. Those are the names that you know they're actually in talks with right now when it comes to the 49ers. I don't know how close that deal is, but those are the ones. Um, the one that makes the most sense, I'll just go out of those two because I think Corlin Sutton makes the most sense. But out of those two, I actually think Debo Samuel makes the most sense strictly because you get him for two years. It's a giant price tag, but you only have to deal with it for two years. It's going to be a lower price tag than what Brandon Ayuk is going to be for the next three years, maybe four years. And you can make that work with the quarterback situation that you have right now as the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I would say Debo Samuel is the most realistic option out of the three, which is wild to say, because as of four days ago, that was not that was not a real thing to talk about. Guys, the Steelers around the 1989 Around 1989, ran a two tight end set with Cooper and Green that made QB Bobby Brister, baby, look like a god. Look good. With fields at quarterback, we could be scary good. I mean, I agree. I think the Steelers could run the football and have a great running dynamic with Justin Fields. I expect a lot of two tight end sets this year as well as zero questions asked. Um, And then, Chris, again, if the Steelers get Ayuk, I hope he isn't a headache like Antonio Brown. I don't expect him to be. I've heard great things about Brandon Ayuk as a teammate and everything that that follows you you were shaking your head down there what's your thoughts it would be very hard to be a headache like antonio brown i would commend anybody that can reach those levels yeah <laughs> it's very true it's very true nobody's antonio brown and if he starts making up words at least there's warning signs you know yeah you could look at it and say mm, not gonna happen 